Hey guys, welcome back to MuscleMentor.net. I'm Brad Holm, this is Justin Harris, and we're gonna keep talking about supplements a little bit, and this time we're gonna go over uh, Yohimbine HCL. So, uh, Justin, go ahead and take it away. Okay, this is, Yohimbine's something that people either respond, usually respond really well to, or don't respond very well to and feel sick from it. Mm -hmm. uh, in the body, there's alpha and beta receptors. Beta receptors are like the stimulatory receptors. So when you, when something binds to a beta receptor, and it stimulates the body, and, uh, uh, this a little off topic here, but for beta receptors, there's two beta two receptors in the lungs, beta one receptors in the heart, and so uh, when you take something like ephedrine, which people know it's a beta agonist, that means it activates beta receptors. Well, there's a different way to activate that. They call it the adrenergic, uh, like adrenaline system, adrenergic receptors, and there's another way to to stimulate adrenaline, and that's by blocking the alpha receptors, which are kind of the opposite of the beta receptors. And that's what yohimbine does, is it kind of antagonizes or blocks the alpha receptors. And so it raises norepinephrine and the adrenaline hormones through that mechanism. Uh, and so uh, the, the problem is, is that it, the, uh, is anyway, if I, there's asthma medications like albuterol and clumbuterol that are very pretty specific to the beta two receptors in the lungs. And so you get this metabolic increase, but you don't really feel, feel an energy increase. And so ephedrine uh, is less specific to the beta-2 receptors in the lungs, and you get a better energy burst from ephedrine than you do from albuterol, clambuterol. And the problem with uh, yohimbine is it, everyone doesn't have the same the same uh, result from that. You, you, you know, ephedrine's pretty predictable. Yohimbine, some people feel really energetic on it. Mm -hmm. Some people just feel nauseous and and like they have a fever. Uh, some people have none of those symptoms. And so it's really kind of person dependent. Me personally, I'm not a fan of you know, makes me makes me feel like my skin's crawling and kind of not total nausea, but kind of just kind of crappy, crappy enough where I no longer want to train for sure. And so I, you know, is something I recommend based on whether the client responds to it or not. It's not something I include with everyone. It can cause, uh, I, I've seen it cause anxiety too, like, like in people that are prone to it. Yeah. And especially with males, I've noticed that that females usually do really well. Like they have no issues with it, no no problem. And and again, with any of this stuff, I mean, I, I I guess I'm pretty moderate. Like we start real low and then and then ramp up. I know some people get really aggressive with it in the beginning, and I think they're probably oh, yeah. gonna see more see more sides with it that way. Um, but I mean, uh, I, I don't see any problem with starting low and 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 going up. I don't think you're gonna be losing anything from that. No. Um, as opposed to going hard and then having to not take it because you had well, there's usually some panic attack receptor down regulate. There's usually pretty strong receptor down regulation mm -hmm. to any adrenaline type product. I yeah, mean, and so you know, it's, uh, especially things that are real specific. You know, like how how we said clomiphenol, butyrol is really specific to a particular receptor, so right. down regulates pretty quickly. And so you can kind of get it's actually up regulation with uh, your hemming because it blocks the alpha receptors, but your the alpha receptors will pretty quickly. <laughs> upregulate even faster to, to overcompensate yeah so you really i don't think there's a i'm not a fan of of blasting any kind of uh product that affects the uh adrenaline yeah yeah and i think that's where a lot of people get that uh the whole uh, adrenal uh, fatigue or, or you know uh where they basically their adrenals are just shot from being overstimulated for so long and then you know when they come off well, I, I think too, it becomes their, it becomes their normal, right? That, that yeah. level of stimulation becomes their normal. So even when their adrenals are back online and everything's cool again, they're like, oh, this is, everything must be low. Well, that's not low. That's just, that's normal. You're just used to being super. Yeah. Kind of like with other things. So, <clears throat> yeah. So, um, and when, when do you, when would you implement Yohimbine in a, like say in a fat loss diet? Because that, that's a, another thing to, to note is I, I don't really think people are going to be using Yohimbine year round or I would not. Yeah. I, I don't think there's, cause it's, I, I, I have had a few clients over the years who responded very well to it, who report a sense of well being, report really good energy. Mm -hmm. We're talking, you know, two or three competitors as opposed to a Federer where 99 yeah. In a half out of a hundred, <laughs> but uh, uh, but yeah, you're real. I mean, most people don't feel great training on it. It raises body temperature kind of to an uncomfortable. Uh, I don't think it raises. I, I don't think it raises body temperature so high to introduce to induce like a fever response. When I say fever response, I'm, that feeling when uh, you almost get the chills. You right. ever had a bad fever? Mm. Even though your temperature's so high, 
you're, you're basically losing heat so fast to, to the atmosphere that you kind of get the chills in response to it. And people get that kind of, I think it's half body temperature raise, half the way, it, the way the body is raising that body temperature through the adrenaline hormones. It's, with you, know I mean, but people get that feeling, and it's not fun to train when you kind of have the chills. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I don't think anyone would use it off season. Uh, very few would, but I implement it kind of. In, it's like a mid range product. I don't like to use it. Uh, I don't. I don't use it through the prep. Most of my fat burners stay in the, that final week. I drop you know, him, him being about two weeks out, mm -hmm. anywhere from seven to seven to fourteen days out, maybe ten days out. Yeah. Uh, I don't have a specific reason. I've always. I feel like I might have read something at one time that it could cause water retention and yeah. I don't remember the exact mechanism. And so rather than risk it or take five minutes to Google it specifically, it's just been my protocol to have clients drop it. And typically most people are happy to drop it at the end anyways, mm -hmm. especially when you're very low cal doing a ton of cardio and taking a ton of stimulants. The last thing you want to be is stimulated with the a beta and a beta agonist where you're hyper and then get this anxiety kind of, clamminess right. <laughs> that sounds that sounds great yeah, yeah. yeah i agree I, I usually drop it about about seven to ten days out also because just from what i've what i've seen again you know this is the old like been doing it for so long i can't remember what i read on google about it but uh it's it, it does cause water retention especially in people who are more prone to it um, so if, if a person has had in their in their past like I, i've i've noticed especially with people who had been obese at one time tend to hold more water and some people explain it like the whole oh they're a, they're an endomorph endomorphs hold more water well i don't know about that but what i do know is that if, if at one time you were holding a lot more body mass as fat you will tend to hold more water in general like if you if you keep your sodium low and then all of a sudden have yeah. a sodium spike you're going to hold 15 pounds where someone else is only going to hold you know three or five so I know. That's actually something we should do a talk on at some point. Because I'm always curious, is it something to do with the lymphatic system? or Because I know in extreme obesity, uh, when you start getting you know lymphedema and things like that, mm -hmm. some people, you know, these people weigh 900 pounds or more, 200 plus pounds of it can come from water. Yeah. I think if you've ever seen, if you've ever watched My 600 Pound Life, <laughs> and you see these people, even if they're, you know, some of them lose you know, dramatic weight loss where they get down under 200 pounds after mm -hmm. being six, seven, 800 mm -hmm. plus pounds. And even when you, when you see them at that, that 200 pound point, uh, if you've ever noticed their ankles, they still look like they have edema. Yeah. And around the, the fingernail beds. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> yeah. So, uh, yeah, we'll do, a, let's, we'll do a talk on that here in a bit. Right. Look forward to it. Yeah. All right.